All right. Welcome to Basic Binges, everyone, on the Nom Talk Network. Uh, sorry for the delay and technical difficulties, but we are bullshit. Glad Kenji was okay. late. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but you know, if you're going to put yourself on the guillotine in there, Kenji, there it is. No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no. Uh, thank you guys for for waiting, and it's it's always awesome to have you guys on board. I I think we've got a full house today. Uh, we got so many people in the chat, and we love it. And it's because we know why. It's because the series is goddamn amazing. Let's be honest, guys. We are we are what we are seven no no six episodes in right no no seven episodes in six episodes Wait, six. six episodes in sorry guys uh we are six episodes not in. all of us have seen everything Mike oh uh, sorry sorry I promise <laughs> no spoilers but um we are six episodes in and all of them have been goddamn amazing let's be honest um so uh I I gotta be I I love that there's so much energy and enthusiasm in the chat. Um, I love that uh, everyone's ready to dive in. We are too. But before we do, we got to just do a round of introductions because I cannot do this show alone. I have to have the best group ever to talk about this with. Uh, so let's start from the top. Uh, Jordan, would you like to introduce yourself? You can do this show alone because you're my Joel in this experience, sir. <laughs> but Aww. because you said I can't do it alone. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Orozco. Um, I am a host and frequent uh, buyer of the Nom Talk channel, and I love y'all. Y'all are great. Um, I have a smorgasbord of, like, wings over here, and I'm, like, just kind of eating them. I have some barbecue wings and some lemon pepper wings with some blue cheese and some little hot sauce. And I am sipping on a wonderful Wonder World Truly, which if you haven't tried that, and there's a mystery flavor, and if you guess it, they'll, like, give you some money. I don't know. Who knows? But uh, I got... Uh, <laughs> I'm drinking a, some wonderful strawberry truly right now. So it's, uh, the prize is the money from the class action lawsuits against Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I'll That's, take it. I mean, I'll take it. It's a, prize. it's a good prize. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, Carolyn, uh, would you like to introduce yourself and what you're eating or drinking? Uh, eating, drinking. I'm Carolyn. I am the uh, new set of eyes to the world of Last of Us. So when they said there was a seventh episode, I freaked out because what the heck is it going to... Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, sorry. I meant six. Six. Okay, yes. This is clearly the finale. <laughs> this is clearly a season finale. And I'm living my best millennial life with my uh, <laughs> my, my pepperoni slices. <laughs> nice. And my brand new, because I'm determined to change my background every show, my brand new snowy background because snow... And, you know, we don't get that in where I'm at. It's, it's, uh, that's what Elsa does. Elsa makes snow. We don't do snow here. Uh, and then I've also got my, I know my, my, my traditional Diet Coke because I'm trying to Diet Coke. Very cool. Love it. Uh, it looks cold where you are, Carolyn, um, but we love it. So <laughs> nice background. Um, and last but not least, the Kenjinator. Um, Kenji, what are you eating and nomming on? Well, I am, uh, nomin on some well i feel like i'm i feel like i'm in good company right now because uh i'm eating a bunch of nerds right now <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um i'm uh as usual sipping on good old-fashioned water from my officially licensed gatewalker saga mug the gatewalker saga <laughs> mug we love it <laughs> very cool uh, very cool down with your hair with down. your hair down with my hair yeah. down this time yes because it's uh, been that kind of day where you need nerds amazing hair down but yeah um again i couldn't ask for a better set of group uh, a better group uh and a better set of people to talk about this episode with just as an fyi i am nomming on a coke zero my traditional can of coke zero uh, i can't do any single podcast without it it's just uh it's in my contract um, but, uh, yeah, no, um, I, I very much, uh, I'm ready and excited to talk about this. There is a lot to unpack in this episode. So let's, let's start. Um, so we start out, uh, with a, a couple in the middle of nowhere, you know, um, uh, a husband comes home, he's just hunted, you know, and it's, it's snowing and it's three months after the events of Henry and Sam, um, which, of course, they had to replay the final, most devastating goddamn scene on the planet right before they get into this. Um, but uh, to remind us about how heartbreaking that was. But three months later, Joel and Ellie are still looking for Tommy. 
Um, they're still trying to make uh, their way to um, Wyoming. That's that's where they're at, right? Um, yeah. So, um, and they they asked this hilarious couple, uh, you know, if they've ever seen anyone, you know, that looks like Tommy. The couple's basically telling them, "Hey, you know, um, you don't don't cross this river of death." You know, uh, they get a kick out of Ellie because Ellie's just a hell of a character. You know, I mean, how many 14 year olds that curse like a sailor do you know? And, uh, you know, Joel plays this game with them. Uh, point to me where this, you know, your location is on the map. And uh, it better be the same as what I asked your partner, like, you know, where we were a couple of, uh, a, you know, decade, sorry, seconds ago. And then, um, yeah, they're telling the truth. They're really in the middle of nowhere. A lot of places all over Wyoming have been just overrun by infected. Um, and uh, yeah, they basically just have to continue on their journey. Uh, but not before Joel suffers kind of like a weird anxiety attack, like a panic attack, you know. Um, and it's it's because every time there's something that feels a little bit hopeless, I guess. Every time that they're that he he gets into this place of despair, he sort of starts suffering the, this this sort of panic attack. Um, so he and Ellie go around, you know, they, they leave, they go camping, Ellie steals some rabbits from that couple. <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, they, we, we start to see this dynamic grow between them, you know, that, uh, that we haven't really experienced before. They've, they've certainly gotten a lot closer. Um, and, uh, Joel's certainly gotten a lot more protective. He refuses to let Ellie do any watches. He's going to stay up all night and protect them both um you know and uh yeah it, it ends up just being you know really cool just seeing them connect and seeing ellie being ellie and opening up herself and cracking wise a lot more and everything like that i'm gonna stop right there because any further is going to take us into one of the next big chapters of this uh you know um this episode so before i get further uh, I want to see what everyone thinks. Uh, Carolyn, I'm going to start with you. How is the intro for you? The uh, the entire intro for this episode. Okay, wait. Carolyn. We have two. We have two redeems. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Bye. Yes. Yep. You're right. Carolyn Talking is... third person for being late, and another person redeemed sing mode. Wait, hang on. Uh, Stephanie, do we talk in third person while singing? Does that knock out both? No. It says so. It. Uh, so Boba Fett redeemed oh. talk in third person for being okay, late, Kenji, and then uh, Heartless redeemed sing mode, who's fucking, what's his name, uh, will happen after talk in third person. Okay, so, all right. That's Eric. Right. Heartless is Eric, by the way. Thanks, we can't just Eric. kill two birds with one stone here, guys. Do no. you guys want that? Okay, no. fine. Okay. Well, okay. Carolyn the last of us. to think. Starting third person mode. Oh, uh, where was what was Carolyn asking being asked again? Carolyn was being asked about um uh, Mike was asking Carolyn what she thought about the intro or what they thought about the intro um in regards to Joel and Ellie's relationship kind of growing right before they see the dam, basically, right before they cross the river of death. Correct. Um Carolyn is of the mind that that's basically the um the the crux of the show. Whenever Carolyn would watch shows like The Walking Dead or any of the other zombie shows, Carolyn really didn't connect to these characters nearly as much. Um, it, it continues mm. to drive home the point for Carolyn that this is a show about humans and not a show about uh, walking creatures of the undead. Um, but Carolyn thinks that it, it it was adorable and fantastic. But given the end of the episode, hmm, Carolyn apologizes. Carolyn apologizes. <laughs> um... Carolyn is uh so yeah Carolyn Carolyn was very pleased Carolyn wants to know is, is that's how it goes in the game this there's just these little these little uh vignettes these little moments uh Mike wants to clarify yes there are moments just between Ellie and Joel that are very much soulful very much like this um <laughs> so yes very much so excellent uh Thank you, Carolyn um Mike loves the response um Mike is going to kick it to Kenji now uh what does Kenji have to say about this moment uh, between Joel and Ellie? Ellie even talking about the fact that she reveals to Joel that she tried to use her blood to heal Sam. You know, did, how is how is all of this for you, Kenji? Well, see, uh, uh, Kenji was definitely Kenji. Kind of like saw this as kind of like an extension of what he was discussing last week regarding Ellie and how she 
wanted to see herself as, you know, the superhero that she sees in these comic books. She wants to be the hero that saves the day because that's who she's supposed to be. She's been led up until this point to believe she's the savior of humanity. She's the thing that's going to save us all from the quad- the cordyceps uh, virus. So like it's so for Kenji to watch this again, it was just kind of just hitting home again for him. Just that feeling of like, cause even as kids, sometimes children are told like you have this, you are so special because you can do X, Y, and Z only you can do X, Y, and Z. So when the time comes where a situation arises where really only you're the person that can fix it and you fail, you it just that the weight of that just feels three times heavier ultimately because it's like if it wasn't her who was it going to be you know so like like if anybody had a chance to save you know was it charlie was it the, the younger bro- sam sam sorry uh, 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 sorry. I, it was sam and henry it was sam and henry that's what it was. uh yeah uh when it came to so when it finally came down to it like you know like when it came to like sam you know trying to save sam like it she you know it was you know she, it, it was just just very it's very heartbreaking and all it's uh, it's usually the therapy has to come after the episode but like they kind of like dumped it on us again i don't know if it i don't know i mean kenji doesn't know if that was because of the fact that they needed to, uh, you know, whether they wanted to deliver that gut punch again one more time, because, you know, these aren't episodes that are released all at once. They're one at a time, once a week. So I don't know if, because it was weird, because <laughs> essentially this episode had two recaps. Mm, it had mm-hmm, two recaps mm-hmm. because it had previously mm-hmm. on and then another previously on. <laughs> like, so like it was really it was interesting in that sense but like but the previously but I don't know if that's because they just wanted to pad out the runtime or if they just wanted to hit us again as a like a, a an even drill home even further just the point that they're trying to make with this episode you know just you know which is ultimate I mean we end up seeing it's like the idea of you know <laughs> It's the it's the it's the feeling of it's the fear of losing everything that you hold dear, you know, and that's and that's kind of how it starts, and that's how the episode starts. We have Henry losing everything, and it's kind of mm-hmm. like a nice little like way to drill it home. But of course, there's that couple that we meet, the Native American couple, which is just oh my god, they're they're like one of my favorite parts of the show so far. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, we're out of third person. Woo! We're nice. out of third person, uh, which means you get yeah. in the sing mode. <laughs> Go ahead. And... So my favorite part, <laughs> my favorite part of the opening was those two couples. Not gonna lie, when I saw the deer, I thought it was a person hanging upside down. But it was not. <laughs> just a deer, upside down, like a frown. <laughs> it, wonderful jokes. With with a with a bunch of blokes crossing the river of death. Wish there was someone named Beth. <laughs> uh, just everything that happens leading up to here was just phenomenal. I really hope we get to see this couple again. And I'm hoping that's where we get the bow and arrow from, because they reference the bow, which we get in the game. But we have not seen the bow needs its fame. Sorry, <laughs> that, that was well done. Very good, Kenji. It's, it's amazing. Yes, very good. All right, now I'm going to pass it to Jordan. Jordan, oh, I'm. What did you think? I'm not singing in. I'm not in sing mode because Heartless said I should have just said. Kenji should be the only one who has to do it. Uh, You're being punished. 
Oh, oh damn. <laughs> okay, so I, I didn't have to sing falsetto for any you of that. You didn't, okay. but I loved it. Also, yeah. Kenji, you have a really good voice. Like, you I do. just realized that. Yeah. Very, and, very Kenji good. is and sounds like a young, wise Jedi master. Yes. Um, oh, sorry. I, sorry, I'm not close. I'm, like, reading this shit. I'm sorry, Mike. No, no, no it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but it's, but Boba Fett wants like to I, pass him some it's almost like I. It's almost like I took musical theater for years. <laughs> it, it very, very well done. It. Okay, yeah. sorry. I will answer this question really quick because I know it's like really. Um, I I I loved this intro, right? Like, um, it was it was kind of like a it was kind of like a moment where it was like PTSD in the beginning, where I'm like, I don't want to relive that moment. I don't want to relive it. And then you like you see Hen Henry, right? Like Henry. Yeah. Is it name? Yeah. yeah. Like shoot Henry. himself, and then you're like, fuck! I didn't want to relive that, right? Like I didn't want to relive what I just saw in the last episode. And yeah. then it's like three months later and I'm like, my emotions can't pass three months later. Like I can't sit here and emotionally process the three months that they've been through, right? But, you know, um, I do like that they included this like native couple in this like whole series. And I've said this before and I feel like this entire series is like, it's trying to hit all the marks without being like too like evident about it and i mm -hmm. love it and it, it, it like i'm sitting here and i'm like this is natural i love it like this is what i would experience if this happens right like and i i feel like this wasn't something where it was like they're trying too hard right yeah. um and then we get ellie who's like here's my rabbit i'm gonna take it and joel's like eh, don't do it and she's like well whatever i'm doing it and um they're like whatever you know and it, it it almost seems like one of those um i don't know if any of you have ever played the um the walking den like tall tale mm -hmm. um games where you're like surviving like in through the wilderness and like you're like doing things and like this reminded me of that like so much right where you know it's just it's the little things that matter and um you kind of get to see the beginning process of like a little like no, like um what is that called uh not a novella but it's like like the movie version of it like where it's like you get novelization like, no no it's like a, it's like a, uh, i can't i can't remember but it, it it's like a mini version of a movie where you get to see it and it's like this whole entire episode plays out like that where it's summarization yeah it's like a oh, gosh. Mm, Sure, we'll go with that. I'm I, duck. I, I, <laughs> I'll look. I'll, duck. I'll look it up in some next second. But like, you kind of get to see sort of like a movie play out in this like 50 minutes of this episode, and the beginning of this was beautiful. And like, you hardly get to see that in the first five episodes, where you're like, okay, cool, but where's the relationship going? Okay, cool, yeah. but like, where where's this building, right? And like, you kind of see it. But in this episode, you kind of get to see it sort of like established and here it is. And so that's what I really liked about the beginning of this. Yeah, I I, th I agree with you a lot. And, and in a lot of ways, when Ellie opens up to Joel about trying to save Sam, um, there's a lot of ways Joel could have reacted. You knew that he was infected and you still stayed with him. You, you know, how dangerous is that? Oh, you know, it doesn't work that way. Da, da, da. No, his 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 place of, you know, how he approaches it, it's very much like a, a caring father. It's almost like it does it's not that simple. And I know that you tried, you know, um it, it, it he doesn't get mad at her, he doesn't scold her or anything like that. He he understands and he sympathizes with her, and it's because he cares about her very, very much. And we're definitely gonna see this. Oh, uh <laughs> sorry, everyone hydrate, by the way. Uh, and Jordan, did somebody somebody called out cutscene? Is that what you were thinking of? Cutscene? No. Maybe it is a no. Like, a, I mean, I'll when you make a up. movie into when you make a movie yeah. into a book, it's usually called novelization. But, yeah. but he's no, talking about like shortening a movie, like condensing yeah, a movie. So, so like. when it's like H.P. Lovecraft did this, where you like make a short, you, you make a story into a short, and it was called the novella. And you, mm. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's the same term for a movie, but it's almost like a snippet or like a, like, like a, like a smaller version of a movie. And I can't remember that term, but I will look it up. Got it. 
Um, and then somebody gifted 12 months of tier one sub to the Nom Talk Network community, and they've gifted 48 subs in the channel. This is Lil Neck Tiffy. Lil Neko Tiffy. Um, thank you so much for that, Lil Neko Tiffy. Thank that's, you. That's awesome. We that's, love, that's you. Yeah. love you. Thank, thank you so much. Um, I, I mean, who wouldn't want to see more of this, right? Um, and the entire jackassery uh that we do here um it is it is wonderful no i'm kidding but uh that being said thank you no we are grateful for it um let's talk let's talk dams and rivers of death right um so we got joel we got ellie really finally crossing the rivers of the river of death um and getting to this dam um and uh you know as soon as they do uh, the people that the the Native American couple kind of warned them about start coming. These these people that we don't know who they are, are they raiders or anything like that? We're just we just see Joel and Ellie walking, and it's a beautifully shot scene where we see a bunch of people on horseback coming over the pass um, right at them, and we are terrified for them. The tension's just like, like so thick you can cut it with a knife, and uh, they've got you know they've got hats and masks and you know dogs with them. And then they they unleash a dog and it sniffs Joel Joel and it's like they're like, oh, you know, if you're infected, that thing's gonna tear you apart. And Joel's <laughs> like relieved. And obviously he's not getting torn apart, but then Ellie, you know, because Ellie triggers the scanner, even though she's not infected, he's like worried to death about her, and you could see it in his face. And thank God she just ends up like hugging the dog and like it ends up loving her. Um, and then Joel's there, they ask Joel, of course, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm looking for my brother, Tommy. And that's when somebody steps forward and goes, hmm, I think we know who you are, you know, and they bring him to a Jackson settlement um, where essentially society and civilization has been recreated very peacefully, very, you know, it, it's a commune. So technically it's a communist, uh, you know, um, commune. And uh, <laughs> like, uh, it, it, there's a very tearful uh, reuniting of Joel and Tommy. And finally, Tommy's not only, you know, is he alive, but he is like, he's good. He's like better than they will. They have ever been in the past couple of years. He's he's thriving. He's good. And Joel's just very happy to see him. And, and everyone's just, you know, happy to see them and everything like that. Um, I'm going to pause there. What did we think of this? What did we think of this, this, you know, uh, revelation that there's the settlement, that the Jackson's like this, that Tommy's alive? That's a lot to process. So I definitely want to start with uh, Jordan. Um, what are your thoughts on on this entire air portion of the show and uh, Joel's reunion with Tommy? Yeah, this kind of was spoiled for me, because if you follow like HBO or um Pedro Pascal on Instagram, you kind of like got spoiled to it like a couple days before the like se the episode aired, and I was like, "Oh great! Like I'm so excited, right? Like he's gonna get reunited." But the way that it happened was like crazy. It was like absolutely crazy. So when he got when when him and uh, Ellie got confronted by like the whole group, I was like, "Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh my god! What's going on? Oh my god! Oh my god!" And um, I cannot see Rutina Wesley who played Maria as yep. Tara from like True Blood. Like I, I haven't seen her in anything since. So when I saw her, I was like, oh shit, she's gonna like suck somebody's blood. And then I'm like, no, this is not, <laughs> this is not the series. This is not no. the series. If anything, they just chew your face off. Yeah, so, right. And yeah. then, but I feel like she was a good, strong character. And then we get like, we get into the town um, that we've kind of like, like you know we get used to in this episode and then there's like fine ass gabriel luna with his long ass hair and i'm like oh, okay <laughs> tell me hey and then and then they're like oh what's going on like and they essentially come into a town where everything is absolutely normal right like normal in societal stance for the time right and you know we find out that maria and you know, Tommy are a thing and like yeah. she's pregnant and like all this stuff and we find out all these things, right? And I think it's sort of like a culture shock to both of them, right? Because they're used to this like tumultuous, like just destructive societal like structure that, the, you know, that they're used to. And then they come into this and they're like, 
this oh this this doesn't fit like this something's wrong right and like to be completely fair like i don't necessarily trust tommy um in the whole mm -hmm. like after this episode especially since you know what joel told him about um ellie i don't necessarily trust him because they've been apart for like so long right um but i thought it was very interesting to see the dynamic between like what could be and then like what is with this town so yeah uh, really insightful um and and yeah it's it's very easy to to mistrust tommy because we haven't seen him in forever we don't know what's been going on with him he didn't you know, obviously he didn't telegraph or, or radio Joel that he was OK. You know, obviously Maria's kind of, uh, you know, not in, a, in my opinion, obviously, for Joel, it would be a negative thing. But for us, obviously, <laughs> his wife is trying to keep the community safe. So no radio. We get it. But yeah, it's it, there's a lot of things here that seem a little bit unclear as to, you know, why you just let Joel do worry all these years about him and everything so it makes it makes a lot of sense why there's a little bit of mistrust there um and and really really interesting take on it um carolyn what about you what did you think of the reunion with tommy the introduction of maria and the rest of the jackson community thoughts on that three things yeah. number one i think the dog was really interesting i know that's the weirdest thing to gravitate towards because the fact that the dog didn't smell cordyceps and the fact that um because i was reading an article somewhere uh, about the show and that it's like obviously after 20 years there's going to be kids like Ellie who were born and there probably are people who already were who are immune to this so Ellie's not the only one and she can't mm. be by process by logical process of elimination so it's like are there already people in the town that have been exposed did the dog just let them slide because dogs can smell cancer but it's like you know is that something they could play with later on uh, second thing, Gabriel, I have met Gabriel Luna. I have hugged the man. He is the sweetest human being on the face of the planet. Um, I love him. To Don't tell me that. He Don't literally, that. he, I used to be, I was, I was big in Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. And he, Ghost Rider is like my, one of my favorite He's characters. Awesome. And he Robbie was, Reyes. he yeah. was so supportive and such a sweet man. And it is delightful to see him thrive. Um, and then number three, I have to, I 100% agree with the lack of trust because it's like, this This is almost too perfect. It works too well. I'm looking for mm -hmm. the, you know, like, where are their bodies? In, is there a basement with bodies in it? Are they like, is is there some kind of creepy post-apocalyptic thing that we don't trust with it? Um, you know, is it is there some kind of cult? Are they worshiping something wild and crazy? Um, but, you know, it, and that just goes to show you the distrust, I think, in society that's fostered by apocalyptic stuff because you never see apoco apocalyptic scenarios that go well. You never see society thrive that looks vaguely familiar. And this society looks vaguely familiar. And it says something to me because I can't go without making a mild political statement occasionally. It says something to me that we can't fathom a society where um, people actually <laughs> share goods and resources. And we're sitting there and we're like, what's the catch? Where's what's your angle? What do you want? Where's and and they actually say that later in the episode too with Joel and Ellie. Where Joel's like, there were people, God, what did he say? Because it made it made so much sense. There were people that wanted to own everything, and then there were people that oh, wanted, yeah. wanted no one to own anything. Yeah, and they they wanted to stop people from owning things. They yeah. wanted to stop people from owning things, and I. That that just to me that made the whole Jacksonville settlement into an entirely different, mm -hmm. like like just sitting there and you really can't. It's so it says something to me that it was so hard to picture that without there being like, you know, Maria opening a cellar door and there's all these clickers and it turns out they've been experimenting on the clickers trying to find their own cure and, you know, they did it didn't happen but still I was waiting for that to happen like oh no we're forcibly turning people into clickers and suddenly they're going to overrun the town and eat everybody. And that didn't happen. And I was confused and lost. <laughs> <laughs> I it's, asked it, you, where is the death? Where where is is the death? death? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's very, it's very interesting. It's, I think years of watching the walking dead have conditioned people to think that, Hey, 
hey, if there's settlements out there that are outside of the protagonists that we're, they're, we're following, they've got to be bad, you know? Um, so it's surprising when we actually get to a settlement that's actually, it seems actually like it's it's fair and it's actually just, and they're trying to do their best to just be decent human beings. It's, it's very counterintuitive to apocalyptic logic, if you guys think about it, so... Um, really good insights there, Carolyn. Um, Kenji, what did you think about um, Joel's reunion with Tommy, uh, Maria's introduction, all of the, the Jacksonville settlements, you know? Well, first of all, that set looks amazingly built. I mean, I don't know how much of that was a blue screen. I don't know how much of that was fudged, but like it was like, I mean, first of all, I mean, because I, I watched a lot of like vfx breakdowns on like certain scenes and stuff and some scenes you can kind of tell they're in front of a green screen and some scenes it's like hold no that's all really real and you're like and it's and of course it's always just so much more i don't know it just it it, it just there's just a certain oomph to it when yeah. they do do everything practically i mean i don't know how much of it was matte paintings too but like but even so like just everything that's going on with this show like vfx whether it's visual effects, special effects, pyro effects, lighting effects, all of it, like it's just so well, it's just so well done. Um, the yes. production in this is fantastic. Um, as far as, but th that's the production side. Acting wise, uh, emotionally, uh, this was, I, first of all, I thought it was great because me personally, I have, I was hoping to see Tommy. Like I was really hoping that we would eventually see Tommy because it's a big deal when we finally do meet him in the game too. So like, I was like, Ah! so like but i was also kind of because of how much we also have been doing one but because they've also made it a point to not do make this a one-to-one -one remake yeah i was also excited to be like what are they gonna do different like maybe yeah. they're gonna completely change it so that tommy's just a freaking <laughs> jerk or something i don't know <laughs> like so like i was really i was looking forward to it um just and, and of course this is when you know we also get to see you know uh, Joel have his moment after he talks with his brother that he has another mini panic attack. Yeah, and uh, he ends up seeing someone that looks like yeah. like Sarah in the crowd, <laughs> and that just the emotional gut punch that that is for him. Yeah. And you know, it's just I really just I just thought it was phenomenal. Like he, it, 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 it's it's these they hbo or naughty i don't know who's i don't know who the production company is i I'll actually should look it up because i know it's distributed by hbo but the production company whoever the production company is whoever the casting director is in this show they did a phenomenal job because literally everybody everybody is bringing an a game of some way shape or form yeah. like even the even the two even the couple that we saw at the beginning of the show i don't think i recognize them at all from anything i think i might recognize the husband but i really don't recognize them from anything but like but with that being said though even though they're not anybody that we know they are still giving like famous people level worthy like performances you know and like and i feel like everybody is doing that whether it's maria uh you know bella ramsey's uh you know obviously all the main characters but even these smaller side characters are just everyone's just bringing in such good <laughs> work and performances and it, it's I mean, I'm probably going to piss off somebody in the chat for saying this, but way better performances than in Walking Dead. And oh, so, yeah. like, so yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. it's not even no, close. No, no. I, I, I'm not even close. You ain't nobody off by saying <laughs> No one's going to piss. Yeah, no one's going to think that's a controversial there, there statement. Are some, there are some diehard Walking Deaders out there, no pun intended. So, like, so, like, <laughs> I have to. <laughs> thank they you. They should love it. There's, there's, yeah, but yeah, there's no question. I <laughs> used I mean, to be one of them. Uh, <laughs> but that's what i'm saying it's like i feel more emotionally invested yeah with these characters yeah i mean and i'm not just saying just with joel and ellie i'm talking about with everybody i am yeah. so invested with all these characters and that's because the people that are the, the people are giving the most raw and genuine performances and i at this i oh, man i just I don't want the series to, I don't want the season one to end. Yeah. And that, cause that means that I have to fucking wait for season two. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it just, it just how it all leads to like the whole 
moment with between Ellie and Sarah. I mean, yeah. Ellie and um, Maria Ellie and uh, and Maria. Sorry, and yeah. just the conversation yeah. that they had, which I'm sure we could segue to that. But yeah, <laughs> that that is actually a really perfect segue. There's a couple of things though. Uh, Graham Green is the gentleman that played the Native American husband um, in the in the beginning. He is um, an Oscar nominee for Dances with Wolves been yep. in the industry for a while really phenomenal actor which is why okay, so i did him. so I, that's yeah, I did recognize, did recognize him. him yeah you did recognize him and then um yeah second of all um really really good points kenji um it's kind of funny because when you play the game actually i think you do have to help out with the dam like because the dam generates electricity so there's a, there's a point where you have to take out joel and ellie and they have to go help with the dam um something power got cut off or something like that you can't do something like that in in the show you know it's just a very uninteresting thing to to show people doing rather than you playing it you know so i'm glad they didn't do that um and and kenji you touched on a really phenomenal topic um which is uh joel seeing um the the mother and the daughter in the crowd and having that really trigger him because of sarah and you know the whole reason that it does trigger him it's because he's starting to get that close to ellie you know and i think that that is one of the most important things to cover in this episode which we will in just a second i do have a quick shameless plug if you guys want more on gabriel luna and everything like that the nerds of color actually did a really amazing interview with gabriel luna um for the show um i'll put put it here in the chat stuff so if people want to go read the uh the, the interview and get more about tommy's character uh they can um but yeah go to the nerds of color.org look that up and uh yeah we'll be able to um you guys will be able to check out more from <laughs> gabriel Lino. sorry shameless plug uh also cue ball redeemed you're so punny um kenji spotlight is on you you have been requested to say a pun for us it just gave you one <laughs> I just I'm just never you. being late to anything ever yeah, again know, on the right? yeah. channel. Um, <laughs> man. Uh, something punny, huh? Something funny. Something man. Oh, I, 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 I've used the majority of my puns. I, 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 <laughs> no, you haven't. I can, <laughs> this isn't even a. This isn't even a pun. This is just me being stupid. I can feel it. Down in my puns, they're per they're a perfect bluish hue, perfect sack lunches, two for one special. <laughs> <laughs> has, has anyone seen Eastbound and Down? Has anyone seen Eastbound and Down? <laughs> I did not get the reference. Okay, because that because that's Will Ferrell's character when he's a he's a used car salesman and he goes, "Oh, I can feel that down in my plums." Oh yeah, <laughs> at one point he goes, "You have completely bored my guests with your horrible story." How on earth can a frozen shit stick to a wall? It makes no sense. <laughs> so, anyways, there's your pun. I can feel it down in my puns. There. Kenji, Kenji's <laughs> acting skills are are on par. Are on point. Absolutely. On, Absolutely. on point. I'm just I'm genuinely impressed. Yep. It, it, hashtag well. get Kenji onto get get Kenji onto season two of Last of Us. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, let's go. Well. Anyway, as we followed Joel and Ellie's journey eastbound and down, there's your pun. Um, no, uh, we are, yeah, we are, uh, we, 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 they're, they have little like, um, kiosks or not kiosks, um, houses, I guess, um, set up for them, you know, so that they can, they can stay the night and everything. Um, Maria, um, speaking of daughters and Ellie and all that stuff, Maria actually, um, takes Ellie and, and gets her cleaned up while Joel and, um, Joel and Tommy have a heart to heart. Um, and, uh, a couple of things end up happening. Um, first off, um, you know, uh, Ellie gets a really fucking purple jacket and a haircut. <laughs> and, uh, second of all, um, you know, she sees a, a a board um that really commemorates two children. Um, you know, there's Maria's um son, I believe, is it Kevin? I think mm -hmm. that was the name. Kevin. Or something. Kevin. And then on the other side is Sarah and um Ellie, who of course, because Mr. Asshole voice tells her, let's just keep our past to ourselves, <laughs> like earlier in the in the season, um, never told her anything about anyone named Sarah. She thinks that Sarah is, you know, her, uh, you know, Maria's daughter and Sarah reveals to her, no, that was Joel's, that was Joel's daughter. And Ellie kind of realizes, you know, why Joel sort of is 
Mr. Asshole voice, essentially. And, um, you know, Maria's kind of criticizing Joel and it's kind of it's kind of effed up, you know, um, and, and Ellie, you see how attached she is to Joel, how loyal she is to Joel, how much she loved Joel, because she is just like firing back at Maria every second of the way, defending Joel very, very much. And, um, you know, I mean, it's just it's a really great scene. Um, but then I'm going to jump ahead a little bit as well in the episode, because there's a scene that kind of parallels her loyalty to Joel and Joel's mm. commitment to her. And that's a scene where Joel is talking to Tommy and he's telling Tommy, I can't do this. And it's a brilliantly fucking acted moment um, with Pedro Pascal. Um, this is the rawest, the most raw that we've seen Joel. Um, and he's he's begging Tommy to take, uh, you know, Ellie the rest of the way. And it's because he cares about Ellie that much. These two have officially you know, gotten way too close to each other than they've ever anticipated. And he's worried so much about how much he's failed everyone. He's failed Sarah. He failed uh, Tess. Everyone that he's ever loved and tried to protect, he's just failed at. And he cannot do this again. That explains the anxiety attacks. That explains everything. Uh, it's because he loves Ellie too much to, to, to fail her again and to lose her. Um, so... I would love to take these two moments and deconstruct them with all three of you guys and see what you guys think. Uh, Carolyn, um, I'll start with you. Thoughts on um, just these two moments and um, how they kind of parallel each other and the relationship that these guys have with each other. Real quick, shout out to HBO and shout out to the state of Hollywood currently addressing <clears throat> Uh, mental health in uh, men in cisgendered masculine cisgendered masculine figures as well as men in general because the only thing I could think of when they had the panic attacks is I was thinking of Puss in Boots and I know it's not a funny scene but I was thinking of yeah. Puss in Boots the PTSD it's, um, a, great, it's a great scene uh, and Carolyn sorry be right before I stop I'm gonna stop you right there somebody uh, redeemed I think it was cue ball redeemed IRL word band for 200 nom talk points uh, so cue ball, let us know what word needs to be redeemed and, uh, we'll, we'll ban it from the rest I, of the chat. For, oh for my God. He's banning okay. the word shit. Oh, okay. Oh, that's not bad. <laughs> so, so no really? one can say shit for the, for, for the extended period of time. So Carolyn. You already oh. did. So you already ruined it. No. <laughs> Starting now. Um, okay. You don't think I have other words to swear with? <laughs> Bring it on. We'll just say crap, man. You know? No, so it's, um. <laughs> So, so I guess you could say that there's there's just a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, mm. um, mm. there's there, there there's there's so much going on between. But I, I really have to commend HBO at, for embracing that, especially with Joel. And I have to, and, and just the way that the, the two of them built this relationship, it's so much different. Mm -hmm. you, I don't. Nobody wants to compare Pedro Pascal's dad roles, but it's 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 very it's it's so much different. And you really have to wonder if Mando and Joel would have like these same conversations between Grogu and Ellie. And it's like, you know, like where, what, how, how do each of these, it made me think about Pedro's acting skills. And as for the characters, it made me think about, um, it, I, I, it, it, it was just so heartwarming to see. And it's, it's so sad that, you know, but the, and, and, and and I think it was last episode where I mentioned that you have all of these these uh, and and Kenji's been talking about two circular stories that kind of come back to each other, and I was I think I was like, um, you know, you have Ellie replacing Joel as like the bitter person, and it this kind of finished that arc because suddenly he's broken over her feelings and he was really worried that he can't protect her. And she's just like, I don't need protecting. So it had a much more positive outcome than I thought. And I blame Robert Kirkland for making me believe that everything is sad for after 10 years of Walking Dead. So it's all Robert Kirkland's fault. <laughs> very, very aptly said, um, for sure. It Damn you, Walking Dead. Um, but uh, yeah, Jordan, what did you think of these two scenes paralleling each other? Ellie's you know, commitment to Joel and Joel's commitment to Ellie. Yeah, so you know, it was it was interesting because um I had ran across a TikTok, I think like two nights before I saw this episode, where it was the video game scene of of the scene where um you know, Ellie's like, I'm not her. 
and yeah. Joel's like, you're like it, in the video game. Joel goes, you're running on thin ice, Ellie, and she's like. No, and and like that would be me too, right? Like in in in, in a situation where I'd be like, I, I like I like I I've been thrust in this situation. I've lost people too, and you need to realize that like you're not the only damaged person in this world. Where like you don't know people's story, you don't know what's going on, and like you may have given up, but like for me, like I've lost people too. And I'm still, like, I still have this hope that, like, I can be the cure, right? Like, which is why I think we kind of see this when she tells Joel about, you know, her trying to cure Sam, right? And yes. and and he has sort of given up, right? And you can kind of see that in the scene with him and Tommy, where he's like, I can't do it. And Tommy's like, well, guess I got to take on the role of the big brother now. And, like, you can't do shit. And Ellie's like, no, like, I, this is who I am. I get it. And, like, it was just so impactful to kind of, like, see that scene play out in this series versus, like, in the game where, like, I experienced that. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I'm not a dad and I'm not somebody who is an orphan. But, like, I felt that, like, in the game, right? Like, you feel that. And in this scene, you're like, I feel both of them, right? Like I could be in those moments, right? And it it, it was almost so real to the point where I was like, it, it just like I I think like I I've said this again, and like Carolyn, I agree with you. Like this is about being human. It's not about like surviving a weird like weird cordyceps zombie like world, right? Like it's about literally just kind of like existing in a world where you are forced to deal with the innermost human experiences that we experience in an everyday sort of like predicament. I was I was really quick. I was thinking about this and I realized in the first episode and I'm assuming the first part of the game they foreshadowed that because Joel's daughter is not killed by uh cordyceps. She's killed by a human. human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Mm and yeah. then it hit me and then you said that I was just like yes yeah, like yep mm, mm -hmm. because it's not it's not and I, I think too like in the walking dead too right like you're like it's it yeah it's zombies and like yeah people get bit and you're like oh fuck I gotta cut their limb off or they just have to fucking be off but I think in general it's about the human condition right like yes. it's about how we as humans survive a really traumatic and like deeply affecting like physical emotional and physiological like reaction to how all this stuff happens which is why i think we're like interested in like end of the world things right because it's like yep. how would we react and we don't know right like we don't know what each of us would be like but to, to get something like the last of us to show us just like generally maybe this is how and what would realistically happen is fascinating right Yep. If you want to know what would realistically happen, just flash back to 2020. Um, anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. No, uh, but uh, that being said, uh, you bring up a really good point. And I, I really, I think I'm dying to get into this as well, Jordan. So um, we might as well get into it. That scene is one of the most iconic scenes from the game. And it's, in my opinion, The Last of Us as a game up to this point in the game um, was phenomenal and iconic and, and wonderful. Um, I think this scene is one of the one of the many, but one of the most important that separates this game from every other game out there, the, every other zombie game, but also every other video game out there. And it's this emotional human story between Joel and Ellie um, and that moment um, between them feels so, how, how that feels so real, how El Joel kind of tells Ellie you know, I'm going to send you a Tommy. It's for your own good. I can't take you, all that stuff. How she pushes back and and to Carolyn's point, yeah, it goes, you know what? You're not the only person that ever lost anyone. You know, ever, everyone that I've ever loved, I've lost except for fucking you. You know, you've, you're, you're the only one that stayed. 
um, and how impactful that is um, and, and wonderful that scene is. It's one of the scenes that I really want to just isolate on its own and talk about this scene alone because it's so powerful. It's so iconic and so brilliantly executed in the show as well. Um, so in addition to that, um, I, I, in addition to my thoughts, I wanted to see what you thought. Um, Kenji, I'll start with you. Um, that scene, how it was recreated, the, the dialogue between them, what did you think? Uh, I actually like there are some sequences throughout this show where it's like, oh, I remember this from the game. And it's like, oh, I think I like the way that they pulled it off in the game more than I did in the, in the show. But uh, this one is actually one of those few sequences where it's like, I actually way more prefer what we ended up seeing in this show than ultimately what we what, what, than what we ended what we did get in the game. It's I, I, I don't know, maybe it's because it's real people and they're not like, you know, you know, T frame characters, but like they're like like the, they they're very much like it's just i feel like in a, in a weird way we've all kind of been in that spot where it's like we don't want to be weak so we think that like the strongest thing for us to do is to like get rid of somebody or something or whatever like some like <clears throat> Because we, the, the, the like the idea, because the idea is like, oh, if it's like out of sight, out of mind, kind of mentality, but like, so we've we've all kind of done that with things, but like, I just, it's such a this is this whole sequence is such a gut punch. I mean, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. just, and 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 I to be perfectly honest, I, and like I said, because this isn't a one to one recreation of the game, I was actually expecting like maybe there actually are gonna there is gonna be like an episode where like the majority of it is just tommy and ellie and at the last second like joel saves the day like white knight style on a horse that he stole but like (laughs) (laughs) but but, like he but you know that obviously we ended up going in a much more you know i guess traditional uh outcome in in a way but uh i really love just everything that happens in that scene because despite the emotional cloud and the weight that that whole scene has there are still moments that are you know it ultimately leads to like it, it ultimately leads to a scene where you know like where you know she he's like you know she's like he's like oh i was trying to leave i was gonna steal a horse that was 30 minutes ago because like because even he really because there's a part of him where even though he's he feels like he he's not strong enough to possibly handle losing Ellie he's also not strong enough to handle losing her then as well yeah, yeah. and it's and it's one of those things where i feel like this is Joel ultimately just accepting the way certain things are like i have to accept the fact that i have now I'm now attached to this person emotionally. And if anything's going to happen, it can't just be my choice. It has to be their choice too. They have to have a say in this because, yeah. because ultimately in a way, she's also not his daughter. So he can't treat her like a daughter and just make choices for her. So like, it's, it's very interesting. And, and I, it's just, I love that line that Gabriel Luna says in, at the beginning of the show, which is, just because my life and just because your life ended doesn't mean that mine has to. Yeah. And, and in a weird way, this is almost like saying Joel's life uh, hasn't ended. It's been, it's going and it's still going or, or maybe in some way it's like, it's been reborn, you know, <clears throat> it's begun again with Ellie. And, yeah. you know, and I just think, you know, I just think that's, it, it's just it's so great i mean and, and of course that the farewell that we end up getting between the brothers is phenomenal too just the whole can i, bark, can I take your gun yeah. yeah sure no worries you know because maria took mine i already <laughs> said you could have it <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was great um, i i do want to point out one thing from q ball thank you q ball you, you typed out a really long response um not long but like insightful and and you took the time to write this out so i i really want to give you a shout out here um q ball said i agree with jordan 
Um, but I think it's really important and easy to understand to see um, why we as people and humans uh, that we don't know what others have gone through. And I wish some people would stop being self um, selfish and think that they had it uh, more worse than others. My point is everyone is not alone. Some people have the same problems and issues that happen to us. Uh, we can get through it together and help each other during this difficult, crazy times uh, nowadays. Um, Cue ball, wonderfully, wonderfully said. Um, thank you for typing that out, for thinking about that, for taking the time to put that together. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick shout out there. So, so yeah. Um, yep. Uh, Carolyn, um, I'm going to kick it to you. Uh, thoughts on just the Joel and Ellie scene um, in the room, but then also as Kenji kind of, um, you know, touched on, uh, probably the sweetest scene in the in the show where he's like, I figured, you know, you deserve a chance. And she's before she even finishes the statement, he just gives him her shit, or gives her stuff. She gives him her stuff and goes like, uh, just get on the horse, you know, and it's like, it's, it's really sweet. Uh, thoughts on that moment. And then the goodbye with the uh, Tommy and Joel. Once again, once again, I'm I'm blown away that this is an actual video game because this is not something that you would traditionally absorb in a video game is you would have the, these very powerful characters and the, these these very powerful moments. Um, I love Pedro and Gabriel as brothers. I would watch a hmm. sitcom of just them as brothers, possibly in an apocalyptic scenario, possibly not. Give Put them in a funny movie. I bet they would be hilarious. <laughs> um, but you know it, it touching on touching on what jordan said and what Cuball said one of the things that i think brings people together is the concept of storytelling in these particular moments so to me again and i've talked about this where it's like you know when the, after the experiences that i had personally during the height of the pandemic um, I think that uh, the fact that so many people, that this even exists, <laughs> you guys are telling me that this has been out here for a while, that this game existed for a while, and that everybody's, and that everybody is really connected with it to the point that, and I, I don't know why, and I, but I remember the, the second half, part two was, people were upset about part two. Um, <clears throat> we're, I don't know why, but still. Um but the 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 fact that it's connected with so much people should give people hope because even if people can't articulate the fact that they are in pain or suffering, the fact that so many people can come and say, "I relate to Joel, I relate to Ellie." These are circumstances that have that this this is a scene that hadn't happened during twenty twenty that happened, mm -hmm. you know, in the that happened in the past. I relate to Tommy. I relate to these characters. Um, it, it's so weird to me that this this thing has connected so many people this very severe thing but it's connected people in such a strangely positive way people aren't ever people are never going to say that i don't think it's in human nature to say it i think that unfortunately as human beings we would see somebody saying and it's getting better it's very clearly getting better because people are openly being like joel's having a panic attack you watch this 20 years ago you you wouldn't say you know oh he's just having a manly moment he's feeling <laughs> something i don't know but um, I don't. It, 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 the fact that we're opening up about that is important. But you know, the fact that people are have never said it, but it still exists, is something that you should take hope from. So I liked all of this because it reminded me that you know we are all in this together because y'all are feeling things and I'm feeling things. And there's connection, even though I don't have to sit there and go, I related because I too have panic attacks because mm -hmm. it's a universal human experience. So um, mm -hmm. I loved all of it. Where's my Gabriel Luna and Pedro Pascal funny? Where's the funny? Bring me funny. <laughs> um, well said, Carolyn. Um, and and last but not least, Jordan. I mean, what did you <laughs> think of just this? Uh, you gave us some points about the you know scene where Joel and Ellie are kind of talking, and she brings up Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts on their goodbye to Tommy and Joel finally relenting and taking Ellie all the way? Yeah, I loved, and I kind of saw it coming when uh, Ellie was like, or when Joel was like, okay, so you have a choice. <laughs> Ellie was just like, you can come with me. She's like, okay, let's go. And I was like, <laughs> I love you because that, that's exactly what I would do, right? Yeah. I will say, I will say, I feel like this is the episode where it's like, okay, I'm extremely attracted to like Pedro Pascal and I'm like, I love you. You're awesome. You're amazing. You're my daddy. Love it. 
but I was extremely and more attracted to Joel in the video game. I'm like, just the look, the like, the style, the fucking walk, the everything. I'm like, fuck. And every time I see like a snippet on TikTok, I'm like, hey, hey, Joel. But you know, I, I feel like, I feel like this was the episode that solidified Joel merging like the video game Joel merging with like the Pedro Pascal Joel where we get the to the end of the episode right and we like actually see a moment where like Joel could potentially not be in the rest of the in in the episode right where he gets stabbed and like they like they go there and like all this stuff and I was like oh my god I was like oh my god and then we get that moment where where Bella Ramsey is like I can't do this without you and I was like oh my god I was like no, Lady Mormont, like, you fucking fought the White Walkers, like, you fucked them up, and then I'm like, she's, like, being vulnerable, right, in this episode, and there, you know, this was, you know, the the part where they leave the settlement, right, like, and they, de- you see them sort of developing this relationship, and it, it, like, I feel like it took us six episodes, but, like, we finally see that, like, they can mesh, and they're they work really well with each other. And um, it was a thing where like they understood each other and then we get this like final scene and then we're like, fuck, like, and we get left with that cliffhanger. And I'm like, fuck, like, no, like I, I need to know, right? And so I, I, <clears throat> I honestly, I loved it. I loved this episode. I thought it was like a mini like movie. I thought it just played out in a way where I was just like, shit, there was a lot to like, process here right and like you know we're we're like over time and all that stuff but like it was a lot like right it was a lot in this episode and so i i really appreciated how they sort of portrayed that um for everybody will Absolutely. joel survive will ellie learn how to fire a gun <laughs> who exactly are the fireflies find out next time on dragon ball i, I mean last of us wait <laughs> on, uh, find out next time on uh air uh, the last airbender <laughs> Oh God, God! I'll I'll say this, um, and and yeah, we're basically at the final, the fi- finale of the episode, um, right? And we'll just we'll summarize everything really quick and just get everyone's final thoughts. But, um, you know, they make it to University of is it University of Colorado? Um, I mm-hmm. think. Um, yeah. and uh, this is actually almost shot for shot done exactly the way that the game is is done yeah. down to the monkeys and everything like that. Even. I was amazed because the campus itself and the production design of the campus where the buildings were all of that, it felt like literally the game come to life because it's one to one. Perfect. Um, You know, they go up there and they discover that the fireflies are no longer there and that they actually moved to Salt Lake City. Um, So they've gone this far. They're still going to have to go a lot further. Um, but, uh, on their way out, um, they catch a couple of raiders, um, who end up catching them and Joel fights and kills one of them, but not before that dude stabs him with the broken end of a baseball bat. And then Pedro, or sorry, Joel has to take it out. Ellie gets him on the horse. She kind of defends them, shoots uh, the guys so that they don't follow them. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, as far as they get, Joel collapses and Ellie, as Jordan mentions, um, is just left there trying to figure out what to do because, uh, he's unresponsive and on the ground and bleeding out. Um, I just wanted to get everyone's quick thoughts about how all of this was Jordan, since you touched on it a little bit already, um, any, any further thoughts on, on that ending, I guess that cliffhanger. Yeah, no, uh, I just, I just want to know what happens. Period. <laughs> of course, and uh, I want to know what happens, to Joel. But you know, it, 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 it's, it's almost like that journey that we sort of like felt through the entire series so far, and this episode sort of like solidified for me. And the fact that Ellie literally like vocalized the fact that she's like, I can't do this without you. <laughs> you need to wake up, like Joel, and right, and then we get that like. Yeah panoramic scene of like them you know in the snow what's happening um and you know in my head i was like i know what to do like let's do a snow pack like pack it it's gonna freeze and then i'm like wrap it and then i'm like let's do and then she's like i don't know what to do and i'm like 
she's a fucking kid. Like, she's a kid, right? Like, and, yeah. but, you know, like, she's a strong character in this, in this entire series, but she literally has no idea what to do, right? In this instance. And I'm pretty sure Joel has no idea what to do, right? Like, even, you know, because he was like, oh, I gotta get out. But then, like, oh, I'm bleeding out. I don't know what the fuck to do. And then he, like, passes out. And so I'm pretty, you know, she's freaking out. But, you know, I can't wait to see what episode seven brings us um, in in this series. So. It's it's interesting because it's almost like Joel's worst fears come to life, right? I yeah. Mean, everything that he was just very emotional about with Tommy about not being able to do this, about not being able to take her away, it's happening, you know, in real time as we're watching it. Um, Carolyn, what did you think of this ending? It's bold of HBO to apparently question mark. Uh, kill off the internet's cool slutty daddy. Because <laughs> that's his TikTok. There's a TikTok sound where they just have different pieces of Pedro Pascal's lines, and he's like, "I am your cool slutty daddy," and I'm like, "Why are we? Why are we doing that?" And I'm making mm. notes because I genuinely was. I, I'm like sitting here going, "Okay, there's no way that they're actually going to do this because." Because, you know, there's no way. Because, again, he is the internet's cool slutty daddy. And it's like, why, you know, <laughs> what is happening here? And, but, you know, um, uh, it, I, I totally agree with you with the idea of, like, pointing and going, oh, I know what you, you got to get the snow and you got to pack it in. Because I was doing the exact same thing. Um, And then, but it's a testament to the realism of the world that, like, you know, neither of them really know what to do. And um, I just... You know, all I want you to do, Naughty Dog, is, you know, if something should happen, turn on your location. You know, I just want to talk. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Kenji, thoughts on the ending? Kenji? Well, the ending was definitely, um, it's definitely a cliffhanger for sure. Um, like, like, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping we get, I mean, I'm hoping we get to see him for the rest of the season. Um, but, um, I mean, but, like, honestly, like, it's, it was, uh, like, it was, I really like this ending. How The only thing that bothered me was that despite all that Joel knows, plus, oh, didn't Tommy end up, wasn't Tommy in the military or something? Like, he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He joined. Yeah. Right. So, why the fuck would you pull something out of you when you've been stabbed? That is, like, the last thing you want to do when you've been shivved by something. The last thing you want to do is to pull out what you've been impaled with out. Because you can actually do more damage pulling it out than it did going in. So, like, and it also prevents it from bleeding. Yeah. A lot. So, like, the fact that he just goes, ah, shit. Oh, no. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? It's something that Boba Fett actually pointed out as well um, on the chat. Oh, so you're, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, see, 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 that's what I'm saying. It's like, I mean, despite yeah. the fact, it's like, yeah, maybe Ellie wouldn't know to pack ice, but bro, <laughs> you should know that much. <laughs> Very true. It's probably just instinct, maybe. You just gut oh, reaction. I mean, <laughs> we need a gut reaction. <laughs> Or, ah, uh, see, 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 mine needs to be doing the puns now. Uh, or it's that they're going, shit, guys, this episode's getting way longer. Um, we need to find a good way to end this. Have Joel do something stupid. What if he pulls a, what if he pulls out a thing that he's been shanked with? Go on. <laughs> hey, hey, Kenji, 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 that's a really cold response. Ah, uh, ah. <laughs> uh, uh, Got it. Pack it. Oh, it's man. So cold. Just See what you did there. Yeah, we're picking up took, the slack for you, Kenji. It, um, it took it took three months for that. It, it took <laughs> it, it it took the show to go. It took the show to go through three months worth of uh, three months worth just for we can make that joke. The show had to go through so much. <laughs> it had to go through a three month time gap just so we can make that joke. Well, in the in the game, you guys remember the game is divided up into seasons, right? Um, and yeah. literally after Henry and Sam, you know, their their segment ends, it kind of does the same thing. It kind of does a time jump, and it it cuts to black, and then it cuts open to winter, and that's when things kind of um are where they are right now. So, um, yeah, no, it's it's yeah. It, it, in other words, the game did it. So that we could make that pun. Um, there you go. But yeah. <laughs> um, 
guys, I, I love this. I love talking about this. I love talking about it with you. I love talking about it with all of our friends on the chat. We love them so much. I wish we could do this all night, um, but unfortunately it is that time and uh, we we will be back, of course. Uh, same last of, same clicker time, same clicker channel, um, <laughs> you know, uh, next week. Um, but before we go, I want to give everyone an opportunity to tell everyone on the chat where they can find them. Uh, Jordan, I'll start with you. Where can everyone find you? Yes, you can find me on Instagram, citystars13. Uh, I post some funny shit. Uh, just stories. I don't post like funny posts because this takes too long to like write a caption and then like to find a picture or a video. And I'm like, it's too much. So follow my stories. Um, so. <laughs> yeah, hashtags. Yeah. But yeah, no. Uh, awesome. City of Stars 13, everyone. Um, Instagram and, and Twitter, right? I think. Or just Instagram. No, my Twitter's something else. I I don't even Got it. Like, worry no worries. Twitter. Instagram. Don't follow his Twitter. There's there's a yeah. lot of there's naughty stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and Carolyn, um, where can everyone find you? So I'll give out my Instagram too because my Instagram could use some followers. Uh, you can follow find me at Carolyn's Geek Out. That's C A R O L Y N Y N uh, S and then Geek and then out. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Carolyn in Fandom, capital C, capital F. Uh, it is L Y N because Carolyn's have this terrible thing where everybody thinks it's L I N E or uh, L I N A or any other name. And it's every Carolyn that I've ever met in my life. And those are, so it's Y N. Um, but yeah, uh, come find me and uh, you can listen to my ranting about my day job <laughs> and <laughs> my writing. We we all love hearing about it, honestly, Carolyn. So um, hopefully, hopefully, it, um, you know, everyone else will, will love that as much as we do. Um, so thank you. And uh, Kenji, where can everyone find you, sir? You can find me on TikTok and on Instagram at Kenjinator. You can also find me on Twitch at the Kenjinator. And on Sundays, I am part of a Dungeons and Dragons uh, campaign with my father. Uh, he is the DM. It's the Gatewalker Saga. Our channel is KD in LA. Uh, we have a uh, our campaigns are every Sunday from one to three p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So we'd love to have you uh, check us out. Awesome, Gatewalker Saga guys. And uh, I've been your host, Mike Manala. You can find me at TidyBullBoy182 on, on Twitter and Instagram. But uh, more than anything, definitely find me on the nerdsofcolor.org, whattowatch.com, and that's at LA. Um, again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Jordan, Carolyn, and Kenji for joining us. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, will Jill survive? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it for sure, though. All right. They won't tell Thanks me anything. Everyone. They won't tell me anything. The we won't tell her anything. Nobody tell her anything. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.